High Performance Psych. It is our third to last class. Blows me away. Uh, in a way, things have gone so quickly, and then in other ways, they have not, for sure. Um, playing a little uh, Five for Fighting. Uh, again, being nostalgic with the end of the year and our seniors leaving us. Uh, what a memorable year. I don't think I'll ever forget the class of 2020. <laughs> but um, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I want to, you guys to know I have posted your final, I don't want to call it a final because it's not a test. <laughs> it's our final post, I guess. And so if you go into here on your Schoology right here, it says leadership video final discussion. Um, if you go into there, uh, it will explain everything that you're going to do. And then on Thursday, May 21st at 1020, we are doing a class Zoom where we will discuss these videos. Um, I'll give you more of a heads up of that on Tuesday, uh, what exactly you need to prep for for Thursday's class. But um, this final leadership video is due on Tuesday, it says Thursday, but you need to have it due on Tuesday for us to have it discussed. So I do need to change that. It is due on Tuesday at 11.59 uh, p.m. that night, okay? So um, I'll talk more about that and what we're gonna do on that Thursday, next Thursday um, for our final class discussion on Tuesday, okay? So leadership video open, you can get that done. It won't take you long. Um, I guarantee you taking you maybe 30 minutes to do this portion of our final discussion. All right. Okay, let's go into um, week nine. And I realized I haven't put up my Thursday stuff. I just wanted to get this lecture going. All right. So um, all we're doing today is we're continuing. This is the leadership lecture part four. And um, all you're doing today is watching the lecture and then once again doing a discussion post to any of the elements discussed in this lecture, 150 words or, um, or slightly more, but not try not to go too far. All right. Okay. So here we go. All right. So we're on number eight of our leadership points. Number eight kind of tried to make these flow into one another. But um, we talked in our last class about how to be a good teammate, how to be supportive, how to um, be communicative. Today, I want to talk about confronting some of that negativity you might find confront with your teammates. So constructively confront negativity, pessimism, and laziness today. And notice it says constructively confront it. A lot of teams won't confront this and good players, captains, they'll just stay quiet and hope that the coach will confront it. And a lot of times the coach has such a wide lens of what to do that for the team in order for the whole team to succeed, that sometimes they don't see what the individuals are doing to sabotage that vision. So you have to maybe as a teammate, either be informative to the coach or to, um, or to confront it yourself. And you'll see in my particular um, example uh, for our final discussion, there's a confrontation that happens that exactly deals with this um, in, in confronting negativity. Um, all right, so as a leader, have the courage to constructively uh, confront negativity, pessimism, and laziness that will cro uh, crop up on your team from time to time. And it happens. It just that's the nature of working with teammates. Instead of fueling the fire by joining in or silently standing by, be sure to refocus your teammates on the solutions rather than dwelling about complaining about the problems. Gosh, do we love to complain. And um, I love to let people vent because venting is good, venting your emotions and complaining. But after a while, and I would say I'm about a five minute person, I'll say, well, then what do we need to do? I start looking for the solution because if you're just getting a cycle of complaining, that's all you're going to do is get in a cycle of complaining. After a certain amount of venting, you need to start lo looking for the solution in order to not let the problem 
destroy and divide your team. Let me give you some stats on this. Um, so first of all, a couple of, of big warnings of things. Uh, these are the P's of, of what can hurt a team. And what we see is that in sports psychology, we see that here's your core. This is you, your team. This is your coaches. These are the people that are in the team, that are working day to day, grinding it out. Outside of that circle, this is your fans. This is your parents, your crowd, okay? And sometimes this circle likes to try and get into the inner circle and that may hurt things. So you have to be really careful about your core and making sure your core has the same vision because there are definitely people outside of our core circle that unintentionally sometimes will try to sabotage what the vision of the team is. And so the piece of um, kind of consequence are sometimes parents are these people that unknowingly or knowingly are trying to sabotage the vision of the team, peers, and the press. Um, parents do a disservice to a team's vision when they say, well, why didn't you shoot the ball more? Or why didn't you do this or that? Well, maybe that wasn't the game plan. But because we respect our parents, because we value their opinion, a lot of times they're, they're what they say may go into our unconscious mind and it affects the overall team that, oh, I should be shooting more. When maybe your job as in the team, your role within the team is to distribute the ball because you are the best passer. And maybe your coach has said, and every once in a while, take it for a drive, but I don't need you to drive the lane every single time. And again, my mind just goes back to basketball. Sorry about that. Um, so those types of things can get into the core and be hurtful to the team vision. Peers, you know, why didn't you score more? Oh, did you lose? Well, what, what, what did you score? That, if you let that get in your mind, it can ruin the team vision. It can ruin what your role is on the team that the coach has thought hours and hours and hours upon. Okay. Coaches don't just drop plays randomly. Uh, they think about the strengths and the weaknesses on the team. They don't just pick characters for a role randomly. They think about how this all is going to work. It's not just something they throw together. And then, of course, the press. And you guys know that most of all, being in the community that we are, that the press sometimes writes things that can be very ruinous to teams or ruinous to the self-efficacy of certain players. And you cannot let that get in your head. Any NBA great player, any NFL great player, they don't look at the news. They don't look at what's being reported because that's only going to do negative things in their heads if they do it. Even the good stuff written can do negative things in your head. OK, so stay away from that stuff. And, you know, maybe to a on the positive side of things that our local newspapers don't really cover our high school sports. Maybe that's a to an advantage for us. Um, and yes there are definitely some disadvantages that our local newspaper does not value our, our sports and our performances and things like that. Um, here's the big thing I think you guys need to see. Uh, it takes six positive leaders to balance one negative leader. If you have a person on your team that is a leader and is the type of person that is constantly complaining and, um, constantly um, just causing the team to come down, um, then it's going to take six positive leaders to balance that out. That's a study that has been done. Um, and that's just uh, not good. Um, so uh, if you look at this, Usually what you have on team is you have a 10% amount of leaders that are very positive, you know, doing all of these things we've been talking about. And then you have a 10% amount of leaders that can be very negative. You have to get those 10% to come to the, to the, to the, uh, to the non evil side. Um, and 80% uh, usually will follow. Okay. So that's really hard. And if you have questions about that, please ask, 
ask me. If you have questions about a negative teammate and don't know how to confront them or how to deal with them, come speak with me. Text me. Email me. Um, nine, build upon the bond of your team today. Remember that it only takes 15 seconds to get to know each teammate, but now you got to put them together. You got to co- make them cohesive. Team chemistry um, usually ebbs and flows throughout a season, and it definitely ebbs and flows based on how well a team is doing. That definitely helps when a team is successful. Uh, take the time to monitor your team chemistry. You can tell when the vibe is off in your team. You can tell when uh, somebody is not feeling it and finding out is, is that just a day thing or is that, is there something going on? So um, stay connected and current with each other. Um, Douse and brush the fires that occur. If those little fires come up and there's negativity in the locker room, you know, let everybody vent and then be like, all right, what are we going to do about this guys? What are we going to do? We've got a much bigger goal ahead of us. What do we got to do? Um, so team bonding is really important. Uh, little traditions are really important to help with team bonding. Um, if your team goes and plays paintball, you know, every preseason, then do those things. Uh, the, I know you guys do, um, team dinners and things like that. Those are fantastic. Um, uh, with my team, we had a tradition that if you made it to playoffs, then you got we got cool team pictures done professionally done and um so these were some of my um my favorite teams to coach um but uh this was kind of our tradition and so they looked forward to that we got to make playoffs because we get the really cool pictures um we always had a tradition of playing in some summer tournaments um and that was just our tradition that's just what we did and it helped us to team bond some of my favorite memories are actually from summer ball not necessarily the season ball Um, but bonding as much as you can. Um, Enjoy the process. We've talked about this. Uh, The struggle, actually, you guys are going to hear about a, you're going to hear a uh, podcast um, about the struggle, or maybe not. I actually may not do that that podcast because it is a longer one and I have a better TED Talk, but struggle helps teams, uh, whether that's like conditioning, uh, CU men's basketball, they have um, Green Berets come in and train them every preseason because it sucks. It is a horrible, horrible, hard conditioning training, but they have to suck through that together. <laughs> and um, it bonds them. Uh, sadly, losses bond teams, um, losing a teammate. Um, I, I constantly think of just the hockey team in Las Vegas and after the Mandalay Bay, Bay shootings, um, how that team, which was not necessarily a team that was supposed to go as far as it did um, into the Stanley Cup playoffs, uh, did because they were bonded over um, what happened in their t- their city. Uh, outside the venue, bus rides are a great bonding. Don't just always ride home with your parents. It is so important to do the bus rides. It's important to to sit with your teammates after a win, after a loss, probably even more important after a loss, because we can all see maybe how each other's reacting to that. Team dinners, giving days. Um, Giving days was something that I used to do with my teams. Every week we'd have somebody on the team sign up to do a giving day on a Friday or a Thursday. Um, And they'd bring treats for everybody. And every week, somebody had a different week. And so we had different treats that would come in and we'd eat after practice. And of course, everybody knows how that goes over. It's great because everybody's so hungry. Um, Lock-in retreats, camps, summer camps, games and competition, off-season, things like that, of course, are bonding. But all the other stuff is bonding, too. Number 10, check in with your coach today. All right. Your coach isn't just your coach. He he or she is not somebody that's just giving you the X's and O's of plays. They invest a ton of time into your team. Um, I think my average bedtime when I was coaching was usually about 12 or one o'clock in, in the morning um, because I was constantly thinking, what are we going to do in practice to do to um, make sure we're ready for this? Or what are we going to do uh, in terms of plays for this game? Um, Ask what you can do best to help the team this week. Find out what your coach wants to accomplish at this week's practices. 
Um, they may say to you, oh my gosh, yeah, thanks. Can you make sure everybody's just really on with this defensive stuff? Because we really got to focus defensively against this next team. Also discuss if there's anything your coach is concerned about regarding the team. Um, talk to them about what you see chemistry wise, what you see mindset wise. Um, you're a team and that includes your coach and that needs to be understood. Um, I always use this example and I, I was searching for a piece of paper because I think I forgot to get a clean piece of paper. So I have no idea what this is. So hopefully it's not important. All right. So think of it this way. The trust that you have with your teammates, the trust that you have with your coach looks like this sheet of paper. Okay. When you break somebody's trust, it's like crumpling up a piece of paper. Okay. And when you ask for somebody for their trust back, because you screwed up. Just keep in mind, we're now trying to make a clean sheet of paper like this, back to normal, okay? And it may get somewhat back to normal, but it's always gonna have some tattering of the trust that was broken, all right? So keep that in mind. And that trust that your coach has, if that trust, coach trusts you as a captain or just even if it's as a player that doesn't have a captainship, don't break that. That is such an important trust and it will help your team. Okay. You may not love everything your coach does. That, that's, you know, he, you don't love everything your parents do. You don't love everything that your siblings do, but you love them and you'll be loyal to them. And that's really, really important. And you can decide maybe midway through the season that this is not a good coach. You don't really love what they're doing. But if you want it to be a successful season, then you need to just do. Okay. Obviously, there is a parameter to that. You know, if a coach is doing something illegal, okay, then that's not okay or something that's that's harmful to mentally or physically to, to players, then that's not okay. But if you want the season to finish out strong, you need to keep that trust as best as you can and keep working towards the goal. Um, I, as a coach, was often criticized for riding people's butts. I won't use this word that's on there, but um, if I'm on your butt, it's because I see something in you. I see a potential. I see more than what you see you can be. And a lot of times coaches don't make it known that I'm writing you, I am getting on you because I think you can do better and I think you have the ability to do better. I think you have the talent, not just the talent, but you have the drive to do better. And I'm trying to drive you. Um, if you feel that your coach is picking on you and you're not seeing it from this lens, then ask, go up to them and say, coach, you know, I hear you. I hear you in my ear constantly, but I just wanted to let you know, I'm not sure why you're in my ear. Are you dry, trying to push me or am I doing things wrong? Like, what is it? Communicate. I just said it. Communicate early. Communicate loudly. Communicate consistently. It is so important. ELC of communication. Um. Build relationships. We've talked about it. There are five fundamental qualities that every team must make great. Oh, look, communication is the first one. Communication, trust, collective responsibility, caring, and pride. I like to think of these each as a separate finger on the fist. Any one individual is important, but you put up all of them together, it's unbeatable. It packs a punch. Our last one today is um, actually... I think that I am done. We're going to stop right there. Um, I'm going to stop right there at 11, I think. And of course, my my thing is so, oh, no, 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 we're going to go. We're going to go. Keep rolling. All right. So our last one here is remind you, your team how today's work leads to tomorrow's dreams. Again, we've talked about that. What's the bigger picture? It's easy to get bogged down in your season with the monotonous drills. Gosh. I totally get that. Tiring conditionings, the demanding workouts, remind your te teammates how all of this together is going to give you an advantage 
over your opponents and help you to achieve the bigger dream. Okay, you've got to sacrifice for that bigger dream, the process. Um, I love this, you know, and you guys have seen this before. I love this is just the idea of this is what the press sees. This is what our peers see. Um, I wouldn't say parents because I think parents see our struggle, um, especially if we are putting in the time to make that struggle. But what they don't see is all of this. OK, and take a look at this, uh, everything that's in there. Sacrifice, discipline, rejection, loneliness, motivation, rest, sleep, time, um, guts, you know, grit, all of those things. That's the things that we are doing. And the bigger picture is what we have to remember that all of those blocks are building us towards. I, I love this. Um, this is one of my favorites. Great leaders uh, don't set out to be a leader. They set out to make a difference. It's never about the role, always about the goal. And then the other one here, this is what leaders do. Okay. Leaders work along. They fight with. They're there right in the trenches versus just demanding. Okay. And ask yourself, are you a leader that just got the captainship and is like, now I'm in charge. You guys got to do this. Or are you right there? leading on. And I think that's just a perfect meme. I, I was shown this meme by uh, one of my performance psychology students uh, that I taught at my other school. Uh, they put this as their weekly inspirational meme and I fell in love with it. And now it's one that I think of constantly. All right, guys, that is it. Yay, I finally got through. Um, <laughs> I found the stopping point. So you are talking on uh, one of the discussion points. Um, actually, I'd probably have you guys uh, do the 150 words, and then you are welcome to respond to somebody else's discussion in class, um, kind of building off of each other's ideas or posting your own original idea. All right, guys, um, I think that is it. Remember that final is posted, so you can get started on that as soon as possible. And I did send the invite for our Zoom meetup. So make sure that you are responding or remember to set your alarm to wake up that morning and attend our last class. All right, guys, have a great day. <laughs>